Let's summarize all this up before we take another step. When it comes to creating relationships between tables, it's a two-step process. The first step is to find out which tables you want to hook up or create relationships between. And then you go to the one table and you'll copy the name of the primary key, or at least that's what I do. So it's going to be manufacturer ID and I paste it over as the same name for the foreign key field in the other table. That way it avoids confusion for me when later on I come to this view and I want to link the foreign key field in one table to the primary key in the other. I mean, they have the same name. Mystery solved. And also keep in mind you want the same data type as the primary key field here over in your foreign key field so they can link up just right. Now once you set that up, then come to this view, the relationships window, and click and drag the foreign key field in that table on top of the primary key in the other or vice versa, primary key on top of the foreign key. It doesn't matter because what sets the value is going to be the one, the number one in the relationship and that's going to be the primary key. They're going to make sure that there's no duplicates or every value in that field is going to be unique and no blanks. So you have one unique value there, number one. And so the other just has to accept whatever's been generated over here. If it hasn't been generated here, they can't make it up over here because it comes back to the relationship and checks with the boss here, el numero uno, and you say, okay, do we have any unique values that I can use? Because over here, I'm trying to enter one in and it's giving me an error saying we don't have it yet. Then the person who sets the rules here, the number one in the relationship, will have the front end user come into the table and type in the manufacturer ID along with its name, so then we can go ahead and enter that ID over in the computer's table. Now see if this makes sense. Between the two tables, when it comes to computers, we have the manufacturer ID. Let's say we've got one in there with the number two. And the name of that is Micron. And let's say we bought five computers from them. Well, over here in the computer's table, we're going to have the manufacturer ID listed five times because we're going to have a barcode for each computer. Each barcode is unique, and that's why we have the primary key assigned to the asset tag, where down below, this isn't the primary key. It can allow duplicates. So we can have hundreds of computers with each having a different manufacturer or the same manufacturer for that matter, in which case, if they're all going to be the same, you may not want a separate table for the manufacturers in any case. We'll talk about that more in just a minute. Now, when it comes to relationships that are like one-to-one, -one, as we'll have here, if I want to link the computers up to the notes table, because we've got the asset tag, the key there, and the asset tag there as well. Now, again, when it comes to linking primary keys to each other, it's a one-to-one -one relationship because each one can only contain a unique value, where the many can contain many values. So when you create that one-to-one -one relationship, which one of these primary keys in these separate tables is going to be the one that sets the values for the other one? Because it's not going to tell you after you link it up. The only way that you'll be able to find out which table sets the values after you link it up, if you're not paying attention to how you linked it, because that's a big part of it, then you can go like into this table and try to create a value there in the primary key field. And if it gives you a buzz because it's not listed over in here, well, then you know you can't generate it here and vice versa because the how you link it is the first indicator about who's going to set the values between that one-to-one -one relationship. In other words, the aggressor, the one who extends their hand in fellowship first, is the one that gets to set the standards or generate the values in that field, in that table. So if I click and drag the primary key from this table and I extend the hand of fellowship to this one over here, this one gets to generate and create those values over here in the primary key field, the asset tag. And this one over here just has to accept whatever they have over here. You cannot create any over here. Unless I extend the fellowship from the notes table first and drag the asset tag there, the primary key, on top of the other one in the computers, in which case this one's the aggressor and they can go ahead and create the values in here where the other one can't generate or create new values. They have to accept in the one-to-one -one relationship what was generated over here first, if at all. Because if not, then, well, you have to come over here and create the ID so we can use it over here in the computer's table. Do I want to have it generated over here, the asset tag, the barcode for notes? That doesn't make sense. The barcode is for computers, right? So I want to make sure that I'm paying attention and not just clicking and dragging and creating a bunch of relationships and hooking them up, that when it comes to one-to-one, -to -one, that I've got to drag it from the computer's table, the barcode, to the notes because the barcode is about computers, not about notes. 
And so you'll notice here we've got the notes for the barcode and maybe you're going to ask the question, do I really need to break off the notes in a separate table from the computers? That depends because maybe every computer is not going to have a note. And so if not every computer is not going to have a note and I don't break off the notes field into its own table, that's called denormalization because normalizing is breaking down the tables into the smallest, most meaningful parts that are not going to have any blank values where I'm going to have blank values from time to time in here as far as notes go for each computer because maybe the notes will be only entered if the computer is having issues. Or better yet, another example is that if you have a client table and some clients have a website address and some don't, instead of creating a second table for the clients called websites and linking it back to the clients table, because again, not all clients will have websites, you'll end up with some blank values sooner or later. And some experts say it's better to normalize the field down into its own table like that, but it's not a set rule. And I'll have a video on normalization standards later on. But for right now, I want to introduce it to you. And finally, to create this one-to-one -one relationship, I shook things up a bit so you can identify in your own settings, if you run into them, of the issues that may arise when you're trying to create these relationships if you didn't set your fields up correctly. So first of all, you see the asset tags. This one's got a space, the primary key field there, and this one doesn't. So again, when it comes to linking up primary key to primary key or primary key to foreign key, Access doesn't care about the names. You can name them whatever you want, but is it going to make sense to you trying to figure out what you're trying to hook up here? That's why I have the names the same, or this one. They're not the same, so I can show you that Access doesn't care. What it cares about is behind the scenes, that the data type is the same, and also it's got the same information in those fields. So if you have the number five here, and you want to enter in something over here that's not the same or has been generated over here, then it won't allow you to do it if you, in the one-to-one -one relationship, extend the hand of fellowship from over here and extend it to the notes table because that means whoever extended it sets the values in that one-to-one -one relationship. It's always going to be in a one-to-many, the one who sets the values because it's going to be unique. But in a one-to-one, -one, it's the aggressor, whoever you click and drag and extend the hand first to. And for me, it's just common sense. When I have the primary key, the barcode for the computers, it's about the computers and not about the notes. Do I have barcode for notes that I want to take about the computers? Well, if I don't have computers, then I won't have any notes. So that's why when it comes to a one-to-one -one relationship, common sense is going to rule over here that I want this to be the aggressor because I'm creating my computers here for the employees. I'm not creating notes for the employees, but they're for the computers. So let's go ahead and select the primary key here and click and drag to extend the fellowship here to dump it on top of the asset tag in the other table, that primary key there, to make it a one-to-one. -one. So we can set the values here because they extended their hand first. And then enforce, cascade, update, and delete related records. Click create and uh-oh, we're in a quandary. Relationship must be the same number of fields with the same data type. Well, I contend if we fix the data types, we won't care about the same number of fields, at least in this situation, because right now I don't have any notes at all. And so let me go ahead and click OK and click Cancel so we can verify this. Let's open up the computers table. How many records do we have? We've got a total of 24 you can see down below in the record navigation bar. And then in the notes, double click, how many do we have here? Zippo. Okay, but what about the data types? So with the cursor flashing in that field, let's come up here and click on the fields tab. Formatting group, the data type is number. Now what about computers? Because they have to be the same data type for the primary keys. You can see the cursor's flashing in the asset tag field. Doesn't matter anywhere in that column for that field. To the formatting group and the data type short text, okay. So you can see that they're two different data types. Now what about short text? Well, short text allows both numbers and text and a combination of both. And so you want to keep that in mind, especially if you want to do some calculations between fields, like maybe multiply the purchase price by another field that gives them a discount of so maybe 10%. Those fields have to be numbers. They can't be short text, even though you just only have numbers in there. So with the barcodes, I'm not going to be doing any calculations with other fields with the barcode. So I can leave it at short text if I want. But if I wanted to change it because maybe I want to do some calculations with that field, well, let's go ahead and right-click on the tab, go to the design view, 
and there's short text. If I go, oh, okay, I'll go ahead and change it to number and then click save. Ooh, some data may be lost. Why? Because the size of one or more fields has been changed to a shorter size. So do you want to proceed? It may truncate it. That's a good point. So you want to make sure that you set your databases up correctly. And if you want to downsize it, you may be chopping off some data. So I'm not going to do that and say no and not save this. So we'll go ahead and close out of here and leave it as short text. But instead, we'll come over here since nothing's been saved here and change it. Well, we can do it up here without going to the design view. Go to the fields tab. Make sure the cursor is flashing in that field and change in the formatting group from number to short text and then be sure to save it. So has it been updated? Well, you can check in the design view. You can right click here to go to the design or, you know, right click there to go to the design and yep, it accepted it. The data type short text. So now that we have the same data type short text for the asset tag in the notes table as it does for the asset tag in computers, we can go ahead and click and drag and make sure we're just not clicking and dragging because you get into a habit of doing that and you're not sure which one in a one-to-one -one relationship is the aggressor. Well, you'll figure that out later on when you try to enter in one table and it says, no, I'm not the one that sets the values. It's the other table. It'll give you an error because it won't find it in the other table. Well, if you're creating from scratch, let's go ahead and dump it on top of the asset tag in the notes table. So he's the aggressor. He can set the values. And let's go ahead and enforce and update and delete related records if you like and click create and there you go. Now I don't know about you but this looks kind of messy. Our relationships are getting crossed and you don't want to cross anybody in a relationship. Kind of sets them off. And there you go. Now if you want to be able to take a snapshot of this and send it off to somebody else for a review because maybe you don't want to send them your whole database so they can open it up and check out the relationships or maybe they don't even have access. Then come up here, click on the design tab and go to the tools group and click on relationship report. Click on that and there you go. Hey, isn't that fun? It's in printable format now. Oh, you may have to fix this so it's aligned perfectly. It's getting kind of out of control. In any case, you go ahead and click on it to zoom out to get an overall look at it. And if it's more than one page, you can go ahead and toggle it. And then if you want to print it, just come up here. Print preview is the related tab because we're in the print preview. Go ahead and click on print to print it off. Of course, you can go ahead and change the page layout. And we'll cover this in reports in a later training video. But for right now, if we're done, you can go ahead and right click and close out of here. Or you can come up here and click on close print preview. and. Now we're in the design view for that report that it generated, which it hasn't been saved. So we get the generic report one. So if you want to save it for later on, then come up here and click save and it'll save it as report. I'm going to click cancel, close out, not save it. And if you're like, oops, oh, rats. Well, that's okay. You can come back up here, design tab and generate it again. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel, get notified of the latest videos, and for only $2 a month, you can have access to all my Microsoft Office training videos.